Howdy, and welcome back to the SASOP show. I am Brian Farrell, Senior IT Manager at Better Cloud, and this is Justine Biankowski, Director of SASOPs and Corporate IT, also at Better Cloud. You're familiar with us. Hopefully, this isn't the first episode if you, you've watched, but if it is, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Thanks for your longtime support. <laughs> we really appreciate you. <laughs> uh, today, we'll be talking about preparing our physical offices for reopening. Um, this discussion is also happening online at the SASOPS community, so please join us there as well, because I'm personally very curious, as is Brian, on what y'all are doing that might be different from us, what you're focusing on, um, and hopefully you can take some stuff away from this conversation as well for your own reopening plans. Yeah, we don't all have to reinvent the wheel every time. We can reinvent it together. The current buzz phrase is hybrid work. So everybody's saying it. It's going around the internet. What does that mean to you? I think for me, it definitely means that there's some people working in the office. There might be some people working remotely. And even for those people that are working in the office, they are maybe not coming in every single day. And we have to figure out how to bring everyone together, make sure they have similar experiences, whether they're in the office or not. Um, and that's kind of where that hybrid role comes in. Also to add to that, the, the importance of having function built spaces and, and going into the office because there's a purpose to it and not just making kind of an arbitrary, uh, like we need 50% of these seats occupied three days a week, you have to come in, it doesn't matter what you're doing. I think the whole point of the office as we think about this going forward is, it's a space that's different from your house. Sometimes working at your house is better for you. You have maybe fewer distractions or more depending on your, your living situation. Uh, but you, you, know, it's, it, you have a little bit more flexibility of working um, and it's great. You don't have to commute. Nobody likes to commute. But the office has advantages too. You get to be around coworkers. You get to be in conference rooms. You get to have access to all these facilities. Uh, you get to get away if that's what you want to do. Um, and so I think it's important to focus on making sure that when we say we're going back into the office, it's for a reason. We're going in because we need to use a conference room. We need to meet with a bunch of people. We're meeting with a client. Um, I have a super fancy whiteboard that I want to use or something like that. You know, the laser show that happens at lunch. Whatever it is, there should be a reason for it. I want to go to the laser show. <laughs> the laser show is um, coming as soon as we get all of our snacks back. Where's my mac and cheese? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the flexibility piece of this is really important because I, I know that with most people that I have talked to, and this is true for myself as well, like I don't want to do one or the other full time. I want mm -hmm. to be able to come into the office when I need to, or if I want to meet with someone, but being able to work from home has enabled me to, you know, move somewhere else that's a little bit further away than like a daily commute would be. So I think it's really powerful and enables your employees to, to have that flexibility. Yeah. And there's been so much, I mean, we've lived through a year of this. There are, have been a lot of studies that show that many people are even more productive at home than they were in the office. And if you give them the choice of the best of both worlds, it's going to just be great for everybody all around. Yeah. Happy employees means efficient employees. Probably. I don't know. And for our office in particular, our office has been open on a, a voluntary basis, scaled down floor plan. Only a certain amount of conference rooms have been available to people, but next year we are planning on opening that up more, making more space available, kind of trying to figure out, well, Will we have a quiet side of the office? Um, you know, so if someone decides that they want to come in one day and like they just need focus space, they could do that. Or if someone's coming in and they're really looking for that camaraderie of working alongside other employees, they also have that option in a different space. Yeah, I think the the spaces thing is really important. I mean, I I think we've talked about this before. We both had cubicles at one point. They were. I miss my cube. Not they were not the worst thing. I mean, everybody is all, everybody was all gung ho about open benching, open office floor plans. And then, uh, every, you know, the community aspect of it, all that stuff. And it's like, Oh, you also need some more privacy at some time. So I think, yeah, figuring out where the spaces are going to be in our offices, um, is important. 
I think when we think about going back to the office, it's not just like a zero or one. It's not like the office is closed. Now it's open. Um, as you mentioned, there's a lot of stages of ramping that up. What are the most important things? What are the priorities that we're that we've been focusing on um, as we start to come back in greater numbers? Mm-hmm. So I think uh, definitely conference rooms in, 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 our, in our case need some updating. We need to make sure that the experience in all of them is similar so people aren't going to one room and getting one set of tools to use and going into another and getting another set of tools. Um, there's some infrastructure updates that we need to do that have been deferred a little bit. So we have to kind of plan all of that out to make sure people have really reliable spaces to go and work. What do you think is really critical to get right, but might be easily overlooked? I think that like conference rooms and Wi-Fi and all of those things are really important and they're really obvious things to focus on. But what you also want to make sure is that you're accounting for the fact that you probably, you yourself, IT person, may not be there in the office as much as you were previously. And so self-service is like a really important thing here. Uh, it's it's one thing if the conference rooms work, but it's another thing if people run out of power supplies or their power adapter doesn't work or they don't have a keyboard or any, you know, they spill water, all of these things you don't want to have to be in the office to get somebody a replacement keyboard. So having a really easy way for employees to help themselves is really important. And I think the same is true with other situate with other of the more complicated things like conference rooms. Like if you can provide employees, easy troubleshooting um, instructions, like just it's like, Hey, you can press this button to turn everything off and turn it back on again. Like that will fix 90% of your problems, like enabling people who are going to be there to help themselves, I think is something that might get overlooked and and definitely shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I think documentation is really key and whether that's documentation that is just visibly available in a conference room, if someone walks into it and they know how to use something or something that's searchable like Confluence or, or Drive or whatever your organization happens to use, you want to make sure that all those things are updated. People know where to get that information. Um, and that way you're enabling them to have a better experience all around. Yeah, absolutely. What's something that you think is going to be really hard to solve for? I think what's going to be really hard to solve is some of these like culture questions that may come up uh, with people, some people returning, some people not returning. How do we make sure that everyone has equitable access to everything? Um, If someone is in a conference room with a bunch of other people, but there's like some people remote, how do we make sure that everyone's thinking of this as a remote first experience? How do we make sure that people aren't just talking over each other and forgetting that there's people remote? Or if someone's writing on a whiteboard and the remote person doesn't see it, like I think um, there's technical ways we can solve for some of this stuff, but a key is just making sure that people are thinking about it and, and not just centering themselves, uh, you know, sometimes that can be hard to do, but um, just like making sure that everyone thinks remote first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there are some tools that are coming out to help with that. Um, even stuff like very subtle things, like I noticed that Google the other day rolled out an enhancement that lets you indicate not just whether you're joining or declining a meeting, but whether you're joining the meeting virtually or joining the meeting in person. So it's, it's a little thing, but I think it's going to it's an example of something that can make kind of a big difference um, in the long run. And I think also people have been really focused on replicating the in-office experience at home um, and completely kind of creating a copy of that. But what we really should be focused on is what is the next iteration of work look like? It, you know, it, if you are trying to replicate the total existing paradigm of like you're in an office and all this stuff and you're trying to do that at home, there's going to be something that's lost in that translation. And so if we can focus on what does it look like if people, rather than trying to make sure everybody's in a conference room and and the meeting and all this other stuff, like, can we move to a more asynchronous way of working where we're not focused on having meetings first, we're focused on collaborating um, independently first uh, through writing or through slides or whatever, you know? Yeah, um, something I really loved that I saw that I believe it, it was GitLab that put this in their big the handbook of like how to work remote. I mean, that's not what it's called, but we'll link it. Um, <laughs> is uh, every meeting should have an agenda duh, that should just be like base level for anyone. 
But assuming that the agenda is linked in the document, if someone can't make the meeting, like make sure all the agenda items are in there, then that person can go in, put in any questions they might have, then they can be addressed in the meeting, notes taken, and they can refer back and see what decisions might have been made. Um, so the, that was kind of a, a great way I thought of making meetings more easier to join without being there kind of quote unquote, like in a very async fashion. Mm -hmm. And surfacing that data to your leadership team as much as you can is really important too. Like we've recently, Justine was instrumental in rolling out a, uh, like a post-meeting survey process for us. Uh, and it's, it's getting a lot of data. It, it, you like just having meetings for the sake of having meetings, it's obviously pointless. So you should figure out if you're, if the meetings your company is having are successful. And if they're not successful, if data shows that people don't like it or whatever, figuring out the reason. And then all you can do is really send that to your, to your leadership team and say, Hey, well, this is, this is what people think about this. Like there's, here's some other alternatives we could have like implementing agendas or, or uh, collaborating more offline and using the meeting as just a, a way to make a quick decision or something like that. Mm -hmm. What are some other ways that you think IT teams can focus on or, or do to make the transition easier for people? Yeah, I think that wayfinding is a really important piece to this. There's a lot of people, at least at Better Cloud, and I'm sure at other companies that have started and never been to the office before. And so, and also our office is pretty large. So even if, even for new people that were starting in the office, uh, having a, a system that allows them to find easy access to resources is really important, like conference rooms and where the self-service cabinets are and where the printers are and where the bathrooms are and all of that stuff. Um, so we use some tools uh, in, to allow our team to do that. Um, we use Office Space, which is a like a SaaS tool for, for managing offices. Um, and then registering for like actually registering for access uh, for the office, um, depending on how your, your company operates, um, you may want to have people sign up for desks and answer questionnaires if needs if need be. And any tool that will make that process more automated and easier is uh, something that I think everybody will appreciate. Yeah, definitely. And then to, to go with that, with the reporting piece, you can then see how spaces are being utilized, how many people are coming in on a daily basis. Um, if, if you can find trends in that and show them to your leadership team, that can just further enable you to make more decisions about how uh, you're reorganizing your office. Yeah, and, and I don't think these things are just limited to like COVID specific times. This is gonna be, a lot of this stuff can be used going forward. Like an occupancy sensor for a conference room is gonna give you useful data no matter what. Conference room utilization was an issue before we all started working remotely and it's even more important now and it will be important in the future. Um, managing desks, Lots of companies had like hot desking or hoteling before. Um, maybe that's what we'll have in the future. Maybe it'll be some combination of that, but a way to manage those desks is important. So you're ready to reopen the floodgates and let everybody back in. You probably can't do that yourself. Uh, you're just one IT team. You can't make all these decisions uh, and you don't exist in a vacuum. So before you reopen the office or open the office more, who are the teams that you should work with? So at Better Cloud, we really thought it was important to have a cross-functional team that was making these decisions together because we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different skills that we can bring to the table on making these decisions. So we have a group of folks from HR, our people team, uh, the facilities team. We also have some folks from legal who are just helping us navigate some of the, the laws and restrictions that might vary state by state. Uh, we are also consulting with the leadership team a lot to make sure that what we're thinking matches what they're thinking, that we're all aligned. And we're also making sure to survey all of our employees and, and figure out what makes them feel comfortable and what, what, could, what we could work on to make sure that when they return to the office, they will actually do so. As it turns out, you just have to listen. Thank you for joining us today and listening to us, listening to us talk about uh, how we're approaching return to the office or reopening the office or whatever you want to call it, um, going from zero to 60 in 1.5 years. Uh, <laughs> 
I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope there's some tips. Uh, if you are curious or you want to talk about any of this stuff more, uh, like we mentioned before, you can join us at the SaaS Ops community. These conversations happen every day. It's great. Uh, you can pick other people's brains or you can just totally lurk and like write down everything and be like, here we go. Plan, plan in place. Yeah. And if your company is thinking about things differently and you want to share what you've learned or the conversations you've had, uh, Brian and I are definitely interested and I'm sure everyone else in the community would be too. So please come join us. We just want friends. Please. More friends. Please. <laughs> that, that was another episode of the SAS Lab show. Until the next Thank time. <laughs> Bye. Howdy. Oh, my hand's going off screen already. This is going to be bad for the edit. Okay.